This is a special tribute to one of my friends, Cedric Robinson, in his 80th year, and in his 50th year of guiding people across the treacherous expanse of Morecambe Bay. Blowing from the bunny bells, where mystery and beauty dwell, the Kent and the Keir and the Loo. Through valleys green and hills they stray, but to the sands of Morecambe Bay, the Kent and the Keir and the Loo. In 2013, he became the longest serving Queen's Guide to the Kent Sands since 1536. He has helped to raise over two million pounds for charity and guided in excess of half a million charity workers across the bay. He also celebrated 53 years of marriage to his devoted wife, Olive. Cedric is a legend around Morecambe Bay for the work that he does for charitable causes, being paid a paltry sum of only £15 per year as a Queen's Guide to the Kent Sands, and not being able to charge a fee for his guiding services. He is always willing to support any charities, whether it's opening a charity shop, <laughs> hey, did you hear that? I hope I'll enter. Charity shop officially open. Or judging Morecambe's Suncastle Festival. Or starting a fun run in the beautiful Lake District. Sometimes without receiving anything. But all done quite voluntarily. When I moved back home to Carnforth in 2004 and began researching for the Loon Valley and Morecambe Bay Heritage films, everyone told me to talk to Cedric, because he knows more about Morecambe Bay than any other living person. So I did, and this has led to a lasting friendship. But who is Cedric? Cedric? That's all you need to say around the bay. You don't need even to mention his last name. What's his background? Why does everyone love him so much? And how can one person earn so much respect? Drawing from my own video material and shadowing him for a season, or as he calls it, stalking him, I hope to be able to give an insight into a man who is devoted to his family, is a fisherman, a shrimper, a cockler, small holder, a very accomplished author of nine books, a raconteur, an untiring supporter of charities and the creator of the world-renowned Morecambe Bay Cross Bay Walk. The walk that has raised more money than any other specialised walk in the world, whilst at the same time being the mildest, gentlest, jovial and unassuming person that I've ever met. And with a wicked sense of humour. But first, let's find out a little bit about Morecambe Bay. Majestic Morecambe Bay, the largest area of continuous intertidal salt flats and marsh in the country. The largest bay in the northwest of England. 310 square kilometres of constantly changing intertidal sands, mudflats and muscle-rich oasis like skiers. Fed by the rivers Wire, Loon, Keir, Kent and Leven. With a tidal range of over 10 metres, one of the largest in the world. Its northern boundary, the towering peaks and fells of the Lake District. One of the most beautiful areas in the whole of England. To the east, the undiscovered peace and tranquility of the Arnside Silverdale area of outstanding natural beauty. And at its southern edge, one of Britain's traditional seaside resorts, Morecambe. Now like a phoenix rising from the ashes, beginning to find fresh life, with new generations coming once more to enjoy the most spectacular promenade view in the whole of Britain. And at its western extremities, the once mighty ports of Fleetwood, and Barrow. Morecambe Bay, 
supplier of the nation's energy needs, both now and in the future. Six trillion cubic feet of natural gas beneath its waves. And where once mighty iron and steelworks made good use of the excellent natural resources such as iron ore and limestone to build mighty ships and weapons of war. Morecambe Bay, with its proud maritime heritage of ancient ports and slaves and mighty docks and liners. Morecambe Bay, with the country's shortest, widest, deepest and straightest canal. Morecambe Bay, a special site of scientific interest, famous the world over for its seafood and one of the most important bird and wildlife areas in Britain. The scenic splendour of Morecambe Bay, beautiful. A history stretching back over thousands of years with its ancient churches, monasteries and stately homes. An ancient pathway for saints, monks, artists, writers, poets, kings and queens. But to the unwary, one of the most treacherous pieces of our British coastal landscape. Where the tide comes in like a galloping horse. And seen of more than one disaster. On a nice summer's day like today, it's easy to forget just the dangers that are lurking below Morecambe Bay. And yet in the last 50 years, no less than half a million people have safely crossed this bay and in doing so have raised over two and a half million pounds for charities, charities all around the country. And you might say, well, how, have this, how is this possible if the bay is such a dangerous place? And all of that is down to one man and one man alone. And his name is Cedric Robinson, MBE. A quiet Flukeborough fisherman who lives over at Kent's Bank, Cedric has successfully led umpteen trips across the bay. And he does it out of sheer dedication and sheer commitment. His £15 a year stipend as the Queen's guide to the sands is hardly what you would call a living wage. But Cedric has dedicated his life to others. And he's been made a lifetime member of the charity that I represent, the Morecambe Bay Partnership. Cedric is well known by many people, and if you walk across the bay with him, as I have done with my family, you'll find that he's full of wonderful stories and wonderful anecdotes. He's frequently heard on local radio, his picture appears in local newspapers, but he's internationally known, having been seen on television from as far as America to Japan. And even as we speak, he's busy signing books in various places around the county because he's celebrating himself with his latest publication, his 50 years of service. Cedric Robinson, if anything else, can be classed as a gentleman, but perhaps more importantly, a gentleman. And he's about to be honored this year to celebrate his 50 years. And I'm sure the testimonials to his character, his nature, his laughter and his ability will be echoed by many people throughout the Bay. Cedric, this is for you. Thank you. Good evening, Cedric. It's Julie Hesmond Alshier, Haley Cropper from Coronation Street. I remember our walk across Morecambe Sands very, very well. It must be about 15 years ago now, and it is a day to remember in my life. Raised lots of money for the Parkinson's Disease Society, went with my mum and my auntie and some good friends, and you were the most gentlemanly and expert guide anyone could wish for. I hope you have a wonderful evening, Cedric. Thank you so much for the unbelievable work you've done over the years and the amount of money that you've helped people raise for various charities. It's just astounding. Thank you so much and congratulations on 50 years as Queen's Guide to the Sands. Of course, Queen's Guide to the Sands is a very ancient post, very ancient office. But uh, Cedric's the longest serving ever. Uh, but he's also popularised those walks across the sands far more than anyone else in history has. Um, and as a result, you know, from his work, he's raised tens of thousands of pounds for charity and given immense pleasure to tens of thousands of people who've 
who've walked in his footsteps uh, across those Kent Sands. Uh, it's, a, it's a good time to look back. He's been doing the job for 50 years. He's 80 years old. And I think I should leave the last word to Olive, his wife. Uh, she characterises Cedric in the phrase, when the tide goes out, so does Cedric. Well, we're happy where we are and what we do. And we've never had a holiday in over 50 years, but it doesn't bother us, right? But if we were to go out for a day, Olive always fancies to go back on the East Coast. She was born in Leeds and she used to visit Scarborough a lot. And if she sees it on television, she, and our publishers brought her a lovely book about Scarborough and she's, she's often reminisces through it. So I'd, I'd love to do that, probably this summer, if, if we get a summer that is. <laughs> well, I must say this, I couldn't have done anything what I've done over the years without my gentle Olive, my wife Olive. We've been married for 53 years and she's been at my side all of that time. She's, she's wonderful, she answers the phone for me. She's, she's been so good, she's, uh, no, she's at my side, she's always there and I think the world of her and Olive thinks the world of me. Just uh, now, uh, uh, Olive's a few years older than me, she's 88 years young and you wouldn't think so. People remark on, you know, she's got those lovely blue eyes which I fell in love with as soon as I saw her, and nice legs. <laughs> no, she, she's just lovely at all, if she is. Everybody takes to her, but they can't have her because she belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> you said at home. <laughs>